In this lesson, we will learn the stroke dash array and the stroke dash offset properties. These properties allow you to use a dash line instead of a solid line as a stroke. The stroke dash array property creates a pattern of dashes and gaps that is used for stroke rendering. The stroke dash array property can take one of two values, such as none or dash array. The none value means the dashes and gaps are not applied. The dash array value specifies the pattern of dashes and gaps. The dash array is a list of parameters that are separated by spaces, commas, or spaces and commas. The parameters of the dash array can be percentages or numbers that will be interpreted in the user unit. If the number of the parameters in dash array is odd, then the user agent will repeat all parameters of dash array. As the result, the number of the parameter in dash array will become even. Then, the user agent will begin to draw a dashes and gaps. The odd parameters are interpreted as a dashes and the even parameters as the gaps. If the length of the result in dash array is not enough to stroke the path, the dash array is used as many times as the user agent needs to stroke the path. As I said, we can use the numbers and percentages as the values of the parameters. When we use numbers as the values, we should have fundamental knowledge of geometry. For example, when we want to stroke a circle by dashes using the dash array, we have to remember the formula for calculating the circumference length. The length of the circumference is equal to the number of 2 that is multiplied by p that is multiplied by the length of the radius, where the p is a constant that is equal to 3.14159. Nine, six, etc. The p constant is the ratio of the circumference length to a length of the diameter of the circle. Let's look at two examples. I have created two circles that both have a radius of 150 pixels. The stroke property is set to blue and the stroke width property is equal to 20 pixels. Let's imagine that we need to draw a stroke that consists of 10 identical dashes and 10 identical gaps. The most obvious solution is to use the percentage values, but unfortunately it's not that simple. You may see that the dash array's value of the first circle consists of two parameters. Both the dash and the gaps parameters are equal to 5%. The parameters of the stroke dash array's value of the second circle are numeric values. The length of the strokes and the gaps are equal to 5% of the circumference length. But why are these circles so different? In the first case, the percentages are percentages of the view box normalized diagonal that is applied to the viewport. These percentages haven't any in common with the length of the circumference. In the second case, I have calculated the value by using the formula. At the first step, I have calculated the circumference length of the circle using the formula. The length of the circumference is equal to a number of 2 that is multiplied by p constant that is multiplied by a circle radius. When we have the circumference length, we can calculate the result by multiplying the circumference length by 5%. 
Then, we should add the result as the value of the dash array's parameters. If we have to apply the dash array to a rectangle, then we can use the formula that calculates perimeter of the rectangle. Then we should calculate the percentage values the same way as we did before. In some cases, you could find yourself in situation when the correctly calculated values will give you a horrible result like in our case. The dashes and gaps are both equal to 2.5% of the rectangle's perimeter. You can see that everything looks great except the corners of the rectangle. So how can we fix this? Note that this operation will increase the length of the dashes on the half of the stroke width if the round or square value is set. And that means that it will visually reduce the gaps. You should do your homework assignment to understand how does it work. The stroke dash offset property specifies the distance from the beginning of the path to a stroke dash array origin point. Note that the different values of the stroke dash offset can lead to the same results. The reason is that the origin point of the dash array is the point where the first dash array pattern begins and it's a relatively origin point. Actually, dash array is expounded in both directions. If we move forward along the path, the user agent adds the values of the dash array parameters sequentially. If we move in the opposite direction, the parameters values of the normalized dash array are written in the reverse order, from the last gap to the first dash. When I use the term normalize dash array, I mean that the numbers of the parameters are even. So, we can say that the dash array repeats in both directions, from the origin point to a positive and the negative infinity. The stroke dash offset determines the position of the origin point of the dash array on the path. If the stroke dash offset is negative, the origin point shifts in the direction of the negative infinity that is beyond the path. If the value of the stroke dash offset is positive, then it moves forward along the path. The stroke dash offset can also move the origin point beyond the path in the positive infinity direction. You will never see these effects, because stroke dash array is the pattern that is repeated itself from the negative infinity to the positive infinity. And that's all for now. Do you have work? And I will see you in the next lesson.